Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Gamester TV, and it's Gamester TV 2. We are broadcasting to you from the Barracks uh, E Cafe in Canberra. It is the Mole Online, or the, the Money Online, uh, a, a qualifying event um, for their nationwide competition played in esports venues, um, net cafes around the country. My name is Crisis, and I'm joined in the studio this time by Mendrix. Hello, Mendrix. Hey, Crisis, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, excited to be casting again. It has been literally months. It's been months. It's been yonks. I'm happy to actually be here as well. Like, uh, I, I, I'm just, just happy. I've finished uni now, ready to really get into the whole League of Legends scene again and get back into it. So, when you say get back into it, does that mean you haven't been playing either? I haven't really been playing that much. I mean, I've been playing here and there. I've kept up with the meta. I've been watching the LCS, but it's more like watching, not playing. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of watching and not watching enough, um, I, I feel. Like, mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's the strange thing. I, my flatmates don't seem to want to watch it with me. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't know why. <laughs> so, um, well, we are, um, like I said in the intro, we're at the barracks today. Um, and uh, we're covering a competition sponsored sponsored by Rocket and Money Online, and we're into the third round. No, this is actually still the second round. If we have a quick look at um, the situation with the brackets, just load them up for you very quickly. Um, we are still in the second round. This is Tony Abbott's daughters versus CCGA, and we're not really sure. Or, or did you, what was CCGA, uh, what did that stand for? I believe it's Crowd Control Gaming. Crowd Control Gaming, there you go. So they're a team, um, or possibly a team uh, from CCG, <laughs> ta taking on Tony Abbott's daughters. So that's going to be quite interesting. I didn't realize yeah. that Tony um, Abbott encouraged his daughters to play games. Yeah, and even did I. I mean, I guess who knows how good they'll be. I'm very excited to see what the Liberals can pull out for us. I wonder, Hopefully it won't be as bad as their budget spill that they decided to give on us well, earlier last year. I wonder how Tony Abbott feels about finding out that one of his daughters is Big Dong 420. Who knows? I, I'm sure he's he's accepting of it in every way possible. Probably because um, he's not a big. Oh, as long as long, <laughs> yeah, as, as long as long as it wasn't one of the boat people, and she's not gay, everything's fine. <laughs> on for 2020. So I mean, maybe she's just putting a, a new spin on the idea of the the big dong 2020. All right, well, let's go through the rest of the players that are on the server. Tony Abbott's daughters, as we said, D Big Dog 420, uh, Peter Chayla Chai Latte, uh, Nijus the Scrub, Coffee Gaming, and D-I-C-K. I wonder what that spells. I do not know. I don't think it's going to be good for our um, for everyone to hear in, in that regard. But, so we've uh, actually got two dongs on <laughs> Tony Abbott's. Pretty daughters. much. <laughs> I guess there's a bit of a phallic fascination going on in this team. <laughs> and on the on, on the red side, we're going to be having from Crowd Control gaming, um, gaming, not glaming, although it would be nice to have a glamorous gaming. Uh, we're going to have CCG Moose, CCG Integrity, Dr. Crumpet, CCG Zamega, I hope that's correct, and CCG Glenroy, or Glenroy? Oh, who might? Who, who knows with these names? Just I think Glenroy's probably some fine, reason. yeah. You think so? Yeah, yeah Glenroy. I reckon. How about, how about CC? Just, we'll just call him though. He's the only CCG we'll refer to as CCG. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, no, which no, CCG no. is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, we'll call, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, we'll call Samaga, Samaga, Integrity, Integrity, Moose, Moose, but Glenroy is going to be CCG. Just, just, that's just what it's going to be. Wow. Well, special one out. Like, if that, maybe he's going to carry the team on his back. Exactly, and so, so he so he is CCG. Okay, so maybe maybe he is. All right, so <laughs> let's uh, say a couple of things about what's going on in the in the champ select. I suppose uh, we've got Zareth, Lysandra, and Annie banned out by Tony Abbott's daughters and LeBlanc, Katarina Fizz. So we've got an all AP champion um, ban out from these two teams. And in fact, well, I, I guess we've got bans getting spread out from the blue team. Tony Abbott's daughters. So we've got a mid lane ban, a top lane ban, and a support ban. Um, but everything targeted at the mid lane for CCG. Yeah, I think they're, they're pretty scared at um, what, what their mid laner can pull out from CCG. 
Clearly, I mean, to be honest, though, with Lissandra, Lissandra is a fantastic flex pick. She works well in top and in the mid lane. So, yeah, but how often do you actually see a Lissandra in the mid? Not that often anymore, to be honest. Lissandra's more more played top, I find, in the higher up metas. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, she's still she's still good for mid. Like, it all comes down to... I mean, she's a great... Lissandra's a great pick into LeBlanc, but LeBlanc's been banned on the other side, so... You know, it's interesting to see probably they're trying to like, counter, counter pick what they want to play. Clearly, they see that it's just a matter of what, you know, what they're thinking of doing. Well, but, what are they thinking of doing? Because... Lissandra is um, is supremely good at at hard engage. Zera mm. is uh, a poke uh, comp, and I guess Annie's also a, a pretty like very, I wouldn't really hard. say Annie's hard engage, but she's got that uh, that AOE CC that she can bring down um, as long as her flash is up. So, oh, what do you yeah. think they don't want to have happen to them with this comp that they've picked? They definitely have a very kite heavy comp. In there, you've got the Callista, one of one of the best kiting champions at the moment. Ari. Um, of, uh, that's just a thing, and then you've also got Morgana. Those those three champions in particular are very kite heavy. You got and you got a bit of engage coming through from Jarvan and from Aurelia, but those two champions also have the ability to like run around their opponents as well. So I'm thinking they're looking to probably you know try and sit around, maybe try to poke. See if they can catch someone out with a good charm, and then from there, just all in them from that point. Well, I mean, you know, they've got the charm that could be speculative, but also the Morgana binding. So either yeah. one of those lands, as long as the other one is up, they're going to be able to come back uh, yeah, and it's, stack, it's a, stack the it's CC. It's like the classic Morgana, Morgana Elise combination that they used to they used to be really popular. Where if, you, if one lands, the other one follows up, you're pretty much going to get killed from that point. Yeah, exactly. So it's all about the lockdown. So CCG um, have chosen. Uh, what, what have they Feels done? They've... Very, they've got the hard engage there. I mean, Amumu, they're, like, they're very team fight. They want to get in and up in your face. Obviously, when Amumu comes in, you've got the Amumu Oriana combination. You got Brum to follow up for an initiate. Even even Tr um, I was about to say Trundle. Even Rumble has the ability to just run in there and start a team fight when he wants. And the good thing is that what you're seeing now, like Rumble's just been one of these picks that just keeps on coming up again and again right now because he's just such a strong teamfight champion and with the way the meta is going in regards to revolving around dragon it's 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 really good to have him there for the team fights and dragons because everyone's in that nice narrow area and he just drop his equalizer and screw everyone super, over super super zone control so in fact they've got a lot of zone control moose on the brahm is going to be able to bring his ulti into play as well uh, what, what's it glacial fissure or something like that fissure. Fissure, yeah. yeah yeah so it's that's like the massive um it's it's similar to uh Trun oh, I'm trying to Rumble's ultimate in that same regard where it's a line. Yeah. So if you, if you get those two lined up in a narrow space, chances are there's going to be a, a very big trade in their favor. All right. So just a quick uh, reminder to teams that when you are doing competitive gaming, what you should be doing is you should be ordering your champions in the order, like ordering your your not your champions, ordering your players in terms of the positions that they're going to be playing. Yeah, as we can see, we've got our Aurelia in the in the mid lane, but I don't think that's happening in, in regards. Um, I mean, I, I doubt that D-I-C-K yeah. is going to be a support Ari. Yeah, I, you, I've seen it, man. I've seen it. So <laughs> don't, 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 don't say it's not going to happen. It all, it all matters. <laughs> like, they always do stuff. But generally, the way it goes is your top laner flowed with your jungler, Followed with your mid laner, followed by your, I believe, I believe it's ADC support. I could be wrong; it might be support ADC, but if no, it's to be honest, ADC in the bottom, and then support at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So generally, that's how you want to like order yourselves in. That way, casters don't get confused. But we can make the adjustments in game. Well, yeah, I mean, they 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 appear as sort of odd things in the row of. On, on the left and right hand side of the screen when you get actually into the game. And the thing is is that those positions are bound to hotkeys. So you hit Q um, and it takes you to the top lane. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's really a matter of like presenting. It's, it's you know, well, quality sorry. of life you, for you, the observers. You, you, yeah. <laughs> you hit <laughs> Q you know and it's it supposed to take you to the top lane, but it actually goes to whoever was top in the selection. Um, so we're heading into the skin battle, but um, we're just going to break for a quick word from our sponsors.
Hey, we're back onto the rift. Sorry to cut that uh, little advert short because I know you were rocking out to the music. But we are into the rift. These guys have loaded really quickly. And that is a reflection of how awesome the computers are at the barracks because they just load super, super fast. And we're into the game straight away. So, uh, Mendrix, we've got uh, champions uh, heading on out there and dropping down defensive wards. Yeah, I think uh, oh. there might be trouble here. Here it comes. And, yeah. <laughs> There's the flash, double flash, blown by the team there, with the ignite following through, and yep, not much Rumble can really do in that sort of situation. They've got a lot of lockdown between the three of them. Yeah, Ari picks up that kill, the first blood, so that's 400 gold, and well, uh, if he wants to take advantage of it, he should be going back to buy, and I guess for of all champions that can benefit out of it, uh, the mid laner is one of them, because um, isn't 400 what a Doran's ring costs? Basically, yeah, she should be going oh, into a pause. So, yeah, basically right now, she should have, as soon as they've got that kill, back straight away, picked up a Dora Ring, come back to lane with a lane advantage over Oriana. Um, obviously, I'm not sure what they were thinking in this situation. Maybe they felt the red buff was under pressure. That's probably why they seem to be making their way down there now. And they basically just don't want to gimp their, gimp their jungler in favor of getting Ari to be a bit stronger in the mid lane. Um, uh, to be honest, I think they should have been able to hold it off between the bottom lane and Jarvan, but it is, it's just, a, I guess, the decision in, in the in the heat of the moment that they decided not to go for it. So let's have a look. The dude face-checking that lag, boys. <laughs> Game has been resumed. No, I don't think I don't think he died because of lag. <laughs> <laughs> I... Think... I... <laughs> oh, there you go. Ari's now going back, so he's actually going to spend uh, spend yeah. the gold, pick up a second Doran. There you go, and we'll head back into the lane with really a fantastic advantage over his opponent. Yeah, definitely in this case. It it would be actually it'd be very bad for her to actually head back into lane because I'm feeling she blew both her flash and ignite to um, get that kill, and basically she didn't go back. She'd be going into lane with a disadvantage, and we have some more lag by the looks of things. Ouch. So a quick shout out to our sponsors today, Money Online, and uh, of course Rocket, and Gamestar, of course, sponsored by Oz Gamers, who give us all sorts of free bandwidth and service base as well. So Oz Gamers, um, head on over to ozgamers.com.au for all sorts of news. Um, they've got some great services uh, spe specifically for gamers. So check them out. Pause time, 28.40. So we've had two pauses already. Do they have a pause limit, or is it a pause time limit? Uh, I don't actually know what the rules are for this competition, other than <laughs> it is a B01. Like, Mendrix, I'm just here to cast, okay? I'm not here to talk about the rules and judge what they need to do. <laughs> <laughs> is that basically what you're telling me there, Crisis? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Now, I've been told a little bit about the competition. It was all kind of very last minute, because uh, Coldblood was going to be co covering the comp for them on site. Um, but of course he's going overseas, so yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. lucky, lucky Coldblood heading off there. I, yeah. I haven't, haven't had a decent chat with Coldblood in a while. I'm interested to see how he's going. Surely he's going very well if he's going overseas. Yeah, I think he is definitely going very well in that regard. Yeah. So we're going through to see, just watching the chat. <laughs> when my baby comes to me, I get to go to Rio. Looks like um, Peter <laughs> Peter Chai Latte is just having a bit of a singing there. Well, maybe and he's listening in, so he gets to go to Rio when he's baby. Maybe. He's, uh, like, he's like riffing off of us. Maybe he is. <laughs> Which means they might actually have had an unfair advantage, because of course I forgot to put the summoner blackout on. So they would have known who was jungling. Like, they uh, might have been well, going, oh, to be, who's going to be, be jungling? Fair. To be fair, I mean, like, it's clearly would have been Brom in that situation who would have been jungling, not the Amumu. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah... It's it's pretty obvious with the meta who comes in, who's going to be the jungler. Like, you see in Amumu, he's probably going to be jungling. Unless there's some crazy shift. I mean, I know Hecarim's really, really good in top lane at the moment. And he's just, he's just a solid laner because you can basically pick up um, movement speed and you're still scaling your attack damage up. So it's you know, starting boots for pots is just it's just such a ridiculous But is start. it that much? Is it really that much that you're moving? It's speed? it's still it's still something because it's hard for you it's harder for you to gank him. You need to blow all your lockdown to kill him. 
Because if you don't, and then the burst doesn't go through as well, it's he's just going to walk away. He'll literally just walk away from you. Well, I I was watching just while I was getting ready for the comp. I was watching you know one of the featured games on the OCE server because of course this is getting played on the OCE region. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I a, a, a top lane Hecarim against the Malphite, and you would think that the one champion that can uh, take on a, a Hecarim would be the Malphite because of no. the, the movement speed shot. Yeah, yeah, you think so. Uh, but, no, my case. goodness me, there was, there was one situation where uh, it was a perfect engage for the Malphite. He opened up with the shard. Um, as the Hecarim was getting away, he came in with the, um, with, with the onslaught, or the unstoppable force, and just had all sorts of uh, damage on him. The Hecarim got away with about 50 HP in the end. Speed yeah. Pony was just too fast. It's yeah, he's 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 fairly ridiculous. And then in, on top of that, you don't really you don't need to run flash with him. That's what makes him so strong. You can go teleport ignite. And if you have a look on on probuilds.net and you type in Hecarim, you will see all these professional top laners practicing with him right now. Because I think it was a Korean. It's sort of like it's. It's taken off and calmed down a bit with the Korean meta, but it's still fairly strong. And it's practicing to test it out because I think he had Zion Spartan about two weeks ago playing it in the LCS, and he just wrecked with it. And it's just, it's just because you're able to you're able to skip your flash because once you've got your full CDR cooldown reduction, you've your ultimate acts as your flash every 30 seconds at level 16. Wow. And and that's the thing. It's like it's pretty much like every 35 seconds you've got a flash or you've got an engage. That's like what's so amazing about it, and yeah, it's he's just a really strong champion right now. So if you guys are looking out and there for all... anything to play, I recommend playing Hecarim. And we've all got Keith to thank for it, don't we? Pretty much, we've all got Keith to thank for it. Yeah, he's, <laughs> it's really weird how that works out. Like how you know, some somehow someone finds out the new meta. Like it, it's every now and again, there's just some new shift that pops in. Like, what if we did this and this, and it just takes off. And that's just what happens. But now it, it doesn't happen as often as it used to. You have to wait for like some sort of patch change, or you have to wait for some sort of um, like item change for there to be this massive shift in the, yeah, in the meta. Yeah, I, I think that's one thing that I've found uh, about the LCS is that there are very, very few players who seem to set the meta. Yeah, it's like very... like everybody seems to fit into the meta, but for me, it's really hard to identify somebody that consistently is bringing champions to into the meta that other people haven't thought of, and but one of them has been. Um, it's not Keith. It's not Keith. Because <laughs> he's in Liquid Team Liquid. Yeah. It's uh, it's the dude that plays for Giants. That's for the Kiwi. Is it Giants? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have there's to. Just too many, there's a lot of teams down. A lot of different. Like, like there's like there's a, what is it? It's so in you know, like in Oceanic, it's OPL in um in the Chinese region, it's LPL in Korea, it's LCK now. Yeah, that's um, the one. That's the one. In yeah, ob obviously, um, there's a European LCS, the American LCS. There's so many leagues and teams now. It's hard to keep track of the players involved and who's who's changing the meta and stuff like that. I mean, you, you try to keep up with it all, but obviously, unless unless you know you you are the casters from there with people throwing stats down your face or feeding you the stats, you're not really sure what's happening. It's quite it's quite hard to get there. You get you get your head all around all the different changes that people are making and who's doing it specifically. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's still like it's very interesting with the meta right now. Like Hecarim, I reckon, is one of those outlier metas where someone just decided, hey, what if we did this with this? And because he was like back when he, you know when he first came out, people were trying him top, but obviously people didn't realize Keen. he was him. Keen is the one that Keen, I was thinking Keen, of. Yes, Keen. Yeah, Keen yeah. on gravity. So yeah, he's yeah. the he's the Kiwi that's playing in the in the LCS. So, so I think he was originally uh, he's originally from Korea. Yeah. Oh, play will resume. So that's pretty good. And and Keen's the one. It wasn't Keith that played Hecarim. It was Keen. Uh, Keen. Yeah. And he's the he's like the only champion or, or only player that I can con like conclusively say is is somebody who's bringing new things. Remember, Keen was the one who played um, Urgot this week. Yeah. Well, I mean, Urgot's always been really good in the top lane. People just don't trust it. He like, played Urgot it's... mid. Oh. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> 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 you really me like messing up with me. Like it's just, ugh. 
Like it's he he's a really he's a solid champion if you play him right. That's that's why like people don't like understand about him. He needs to get ahead. If he gets ahead, he's gonna pick up the squishy person in your team, pull him into and pull him into his team. They're gonna die. That's just what how it goes. But if you don't get ahead, he sort of he becomes useless. <laughs> that's the only problem. And that's how it is with all champions. But I guess the real metal champions that you really see out there, if they're behind is still relevant that's the big thing yeah i guess that's the real difference so you've got to you in the mid lane right now yeah there seems to be at a, at a oh yeah we've got a flash Ariana. going out from there integrity was a flash. and yep. in fact he used the heal into as well. a boss <laughs> so yeah Did he use a heal no he doesn't have it. he used his heal yeah i saw a heal go off too yeah heal's been used if you look in the corner there heal's dead down He's running heal in mid lane. Yes, he's running heal in mid lane. <laughs> well, I don't. I've only just noticed. I like. I saw the animation. I heard the sound, and I was like, "But mid lanes laners don't run heal." But I guess it, integrity well, it does, depends. and it saved him. Well, looking at this, uh, I would say CCG have the late game. So you kind of worried about the early game aggression that the the other team can pull out. So basically, if you survive lane, farm up well, you, you should, you've essentially won the game. That's, so Glenroy the misses the bandage toss. Oh man, he'll be a sad uh, <laughs> little, I was going to say panda, but a uh, sad mummy. Um, and he heads out, D-I-C-K, gets some great harass down onto him and uh, puts down his ward, belatedly. Um, but he's going to feel a little bit more protected now with uh, Glenroy heading back into the jungle and taking with the race and really suffering as a result. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I was unfortunate she missed. He he missed there. He's already he's pretty down now. He's been chunked away about those raves, so he needs to get out. Looks like um right now in in the lanes there seems to be an inverse relationship happening in the bottom and in the top lane. Um, top lane seems to be bullying out the Aurelia, while in the bottom lane you've got the Callista Morgana combination bullying out uh, Lucian and Bron. So nice little uh, balance going on uh, if you look at a at a strategic level across the map. Four minutes gone. We've just had that one kill, which was the the lucky first blood, um, and the goal difference just eight. It, it was lag. Point. It was lag. Remember that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's right. It was quote lag. quote lag. It yeah. Was lag. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so no dragons, of course. Too early for that at this stage. And big dong four twenty down at the bottom. We're gonna look for that uh, combo of the ult. Yeah, it of seems Kalista. to be Bandit Torch has been got, caught onto Ari right now. They seem to be following through. Charm goes down onto him, maybe not too much. He's popped the ignite, but he's still okay. Looks like they're chasing after right now. Looks like Jarvan's gonna go through and be able Counter to pick gank. up the No, there's a flash. Looks like Integrity picks up Ari with those auto attack cogs and Glenroy is getting to get um, he's gonna get away. Well Integrity is hanging around and unfortunately he's gonna get caught by Chai Lite. Chai Lite doesn't have any sort of uh, a slow at this stage, but as soon as his banner comes back up or his standard comes back up, he'd have the knock up, but he's decided to turn around, so oops. Yeah, pretty much. Looks like everything's sort of calmed down a bit and and Peter Chai Lite's gonna be like, Oh that's okay, I'll take the kill and the farm then I guess. Yeah, this is taxes. It's all about the taxes. I mean it would have crashed against the the mid lane turret anyway, so he's actually yeah. doing the mid lane uh, a favour. Pretty he's not much, actually doing anything. In the top <laughs> lane, it's pretty neck and neck at the moment. Need just the scrub versus Zarmiga, and uh, nobody's really hurt at this stage. We see some pots getting popped at the moment, um, but really these two are well. I mean, both of them are, are kind of lane bullies, aren't they? Um, sort of to a degree. I think um, Aurelia is going to have a big edge, 6 to 9, right now. So this Rumble really needs to like make use of the time he's got. Uh, he seems to be pushing up, but he's, he's CSing fairly well. Um, they, there was a force back before in the in the mid lane. It looks like a movement's coming up right now to see if you can make something happen with J4 following in, in Woot. Oh, oh he tried to pick up Chai Lite, but unfortunately the bandage tosses at the moment just a little bit off point. And Chai Lite is going to have to use his uh, standard to get out there. His uh, standard and, and what is it? The kind of lunge thing. So this is the dragon toss, yeah. Dragon just, toss. Uh, the flag and just, drag. Just, yeah, the flag and drag. Yeah. Standard toss. But it basically you can give it a one. I think it's um dragon lance is the is a term that they use. But it's everyone everyone in the LCS just says oh, just give it a flag dragon drag. flag. Man, yet another pause. So this is the game. Give warning before unpause. Right. Boots OP. <laughs> Boots are OP. Remember guys, Hecarim, movement speed. 
Oh, crazy stuff. Oh, of course, it's now paused. So, of course, even though it's paused, I can't move elements on the screen yeah. around. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, just having a quick look at, at the map right now, there is a massive CS differential in the bottom lane. Uh, Calissa has 49 CS to Lucian's 25. So, and she still seems to be very healthy right now with plenty plenty of mana. Um, Lucian does have damage advantage right now because he's got the two Doran Blades. So, you know, if they hang around too long there in the bottom lane, it might come back to haunt them. But by the looks of things right now, the Morgana is doing a fantastic job keeping them down basically keep them harassed because you get the binding it's fairly easy then afterwards for Calista to get her her spear off and then from there you follow it up with the rend and the damage is real the damage is real I mean, it's fair enough but surely there are opportunities to trade rather than simply taking the hits and getting bullied that's what's well, the thing it's kind of up to, up to up to them to do it I don't really see like Lucian doesn't have that much synergy with Brom personally speaking. I mean, you, well, you have a lot he's got the synergy. attack speed, doesn't he? He's got the double shot that would synergize he's got, with... He's got the, the double shot that synergizes with... But if you look at, like, like say, for example, with Janna, Janna it's really big because Janna throws a shield onto Lucian. That gives him the opportunity to run in, take some free damage because the shield will cop it, and then his attack damage is increased because of it. So the combo is just that much more powerful. Whereas Brom's more or less got the... You know, he needs to land his stun, and then Lucian needs to follow up. And in... And it's kind of hard for Brom to do that with a uh, Callista jumping every which way and a, and Morgana having a black shield that she can just pop on if it's really an issue. So it's you can understand why it's sort of like playing against them right now. It's going to be interesting to see. I think they're really focusing more on the team fight, the late game. That's their that's their big end game goal. So right now their the big concern is just surviving the laning phase and making sure Callista doesn't get too big. And, and pretty much any other lane doesn't get too big and they should be okay. And I mean, they've managed to now trade kills in terms of where both mid laners have, have kills. So that's going to help out um, Oriana a lot. But she is all behind in CS right now where she's she's about 12 CS down. Which, we, as the game goes on, it should begin to even out because Oriana will naturally get stronger and get better wave clear than Ari. But it's, it's, uh, it's up to Ari to keep her down. Well... We have to have a game that's not paused in order yeah, to see do. whether that can play out. Like, this cast is like, what, we're, we're, we're 20, 20 minutes into the cast. <laughs> and we've minutes had six minutes cast, of game. Yeah. <laughs> and, and pretty much, yeah. Well, I mean, these guys need the time. They're at the, they're at the Barracks Cafe, so obviously it must be just the internet connection that's an issue right now. They've still got fantastic computers there. So once, once they get sorted out, it looks like we've got to unpause coming back in again. And we should be ready to get back into the action. Yay! Okay, so back into the action. Back into top lane uh, Rumble bullying. And bottom lane, Callista Morgana bullying. <laughs> but, much, uh, yeah. but Rumble, as you said, Rumble's time is... is, is it's it's is going coming. short. At the moment. Well, that's the thing. I think, has Rumble gone back? No, they have, both of them have never gone back. And Aurelia has been keeping up with farm. And the moment she gets a Sheen... He's gonna have some trouble because she can just all in run at him because she's level six now. So he, it's he needs to really watch out for when she gets that sheen. And she's got enough to uh, blue pill and pick it up, but I suspect she'll want to blue pill um, pick up a sheen and uh, boots at least. Yeah, yeah, basically she wants to be able to make sure she can get on him so he can't just uh, throw his little harpoons out there to make sure she can't catch him. And Doctor Crumpet eats another bind. And the follow-up from the Tormented Soil um, adds insult to injury. And that's the signal for Coffee Gaming and Big Dong to head on back and uh, do some buying. Yeah, it looks like uh, there you go, straight away into the BF sword and a couple of potions pick up. So basically the, what she was waiting for there is to get that BF. She's probably going to go straight into a Bloodthirster um, because that seems to be the build with her right now. You run, you rush the, the Bloodthirster to get the extra shield. Though it's going to be up to her to see whether she decides to pick up the the Infinity Edge first. But generally, just, you like to get the Bloodthirster. Yeah, and just relying on her passive for mobility more than anything Pretty else. much, yeah. yeah. That's the idea that we're going through. I think there was this big thing before where um, there was Hurricane, and then after that it was Blade of the Ruin King, and now it's become Bloodthirster as the new build. So it'll be interesting to see how Coffee Gaming takes takes this sort of like build path with Blister. But yeah, the advantage in the um the bot lane now is only going to grow, so they really need to like make something happen in the bot lane. Mumu needs to get down there and try to help them out before she becomes too strong to even gank. Yeah, so Mumu at the moment just 
farming his way towards his level 6. And I'm not even sure if he'll get it after picking up this red buff. Uh, nope, he's still got to kill one more camp. But once he's got that camp, uh, he will be able to be much more effective in terms of ganking. If he lands one of his bandage tosses, that surely must be a guaranteed kill with the follow-up from his ulti. Pretty much, like, like, like they have a really hard engaged team. So the moment he lands one, it's it's some like in every lane something can can happen. Basically, you got the slow from Rumble, you got the shock wave, and the attack dissidents from Oriana. You've got the Brum ulti follow up. It's there's a lot you can do really when if he lands his bandage toss in every single lane. So it's just a matter of him getting out there and making some work happen. Okay, so he's going to pick up the blue buff and not give it away to Oriana, which is interesting, and I suppose, fair enough, it's one of the few champions uh, in the jungle that you would actually do this to, um, because his effectiveness is so far improved uh, from having the blue buff. But uh, instead of heading down to the bottom lane to do anything, uh, he's... Oh, hang on, and turns around, decides he's going to stick around, uh, but he's going to eat a binding, unfortunately, and take a bunch of damage. In fact, the ulti going down from Big Dong uh, 420 has got him locked down. He drops uh, an ignite. This is a super aggressive play, but uh, forces the flash out of Glenroy uh, to clear the way for an easy dragon for Tony Abbott's daughters. Yeah, very well done there. They they the opportunity. They they figured he was probably at his blue at that time. They had control of the bottom lane at that point, and it was just a really easy dragon. And Big Don Ford when he really pulled out what he needed to to make sure that Amumu was going to get nowhere near that dragon for a smite steal. Super super aggressive having a um, a support with ignite. Yeah, it is very well. It's, it seems to be um you know the way to go if you have a very aggressive lane. I um, mean, and Callista Callista Morgana is fairly aggressive. So, you, you look at a lot of Leona picks right there, a lot of Leonas like to take Ignite as well instead of the Exhaust. And if you look at it, who, who on their team really do you want to Exhaust? Like, oh, fair enough. It's not, it's not like there's a massive damage reduction that yeah. you definitely, definitely have to have. Dr. Crumpet eats another binding. This is the standard Morgana harassment um, that is just time and time again working in favor of uh, Tony Abbott's daughters down in the bottom lane. In the mid lane, we've got a little bit of a tete-a-tete -tete going on between the junglers and the mid laners, but the, both of the junglers decide, okay, we're going to back off now. We're still waiting for a Mumu to get into a lane, get a bandage tossed down and pop his ulti. Yeah, pretty much. He's got it now, and he does have his blue buff and his red, um, his blue buff to keep him, you know, keep his tears going the whole way through. It looks like he's trying to sneak around right now as Aurelia pops her ultimate just to clear that wave out. And yeah, it looks like, you know, even after picking up that, oh, she didn't pick up the Sheen, so she's not trying to get the kill right now. She's just trying to stay alive. She picked, she went Phage. So it looks like he's going to just camp it out right now. Oh, man. Nijas the yes. Scrub is going to go down, surely. Right, so we want to see... Oh, Zamiga drops his Equalizer down. The ulti holds him down. Nijas the Scrub surely is going to go down. He gets in range of his turret, so the damage is going down. That's the last hope onto Zamiga, but he sh throws the shield on and gets away with it. Meanwhile, down at the bottom lane, Moose takes a massive amount of damage. He's trying to get away as Big Dong 420. He has smelled blood, flashes forward, gets the Soul Shackle down, and forces a flash out of Dr. Crumpet. Beautiful, beautiful player over there. And then uh, out of dodge free, uh, Zamiga came down, uh, came down to try and clean things up there. But Coffee Gaming uh, looking after his support beautifully. Yeah, not, not using that um, R of his to troll him away. Like, oh, no, 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 no go back in there. Nah. I've, seen a <laughs> lot of, I've seen a lot of Callistas just go, oh, we're, we're, we're definitely ahead now and just sacrificing their supports for the sake of it, just for the lols. But in this case, you know, definitely a lot on the line right now, trying to qualify on through into this, what is it, Money Online sponsored event. So definitely doesn't want to just throw away kills for no reason. So just an interesting situation really in terms of uh, of, of the, the kill situation. Oh, hang on. In the mid lane, Integrity gets caught. Full combo gets dropped down onto him. Glenroy comes in to try and uh, counter gank, but in fact, all he's going to do is uh, feed another kill. D-I-C-K picks up a kill there, and uh, Peter Chai Lite, um has a kill of his own as well. So 3 to 2, and uh, just <laughs> as I was going to talk about a kill advantage in favor of a CCG, um, a, it melts away. Zamiga gets taken down. A long-range ulti from uh, the Brom isn't enough to hold Chai Lite in place underneath that turret, and so there isn't a return kill for the tower dive onto the rumble, and things very rapidly, Menrix crumbling for CCGA. 
Yeah, definitely. Right now, Norelia is also going to be picking up the... Uh, is that going to be the first tower of the game? Yeah, she's picking up the first tower of the game right there. She's basically, she had free reign given to her after that death that was basically allowing her to get back into the game. So her team definitely helping her out there in that regard by relieving some pressure and basically causing it some around the map. And from that, I mean, they've got the dragon ahead now. They've got a almost 4k gold lead. It's it's you know it's going to be at 14 going minutes from good to worse at 14 minutes yeah it's getting from you know it's going from bad to worse right now after all those little plays around the map. So one dragon as well in favour of Tony Abbott's Abbott's daughters. They are doing very very well at this stage. Lots of vision down. They've got a couple of pinks down in their own jungle and just the one forward, uh, sorry, two forward wards in their opponent's jungle. So really at the moment everything. Um, in the hands of Tony Abbott's daughters for the win. Yeah, right now they're definitely in the driving seat. As I was saying before, the end game team does go towards crowd control gaming, but it looks like that um, that seven dollar co payment for the GP is really paying off right now for the Tony Abbott's daughters. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 yeah, I'm here. I'm here every Tuesday, guys. The heels are expensive. The heels. <laughs> the heels they're so expensive. Are, maybe that's why expensive. Oriana took heels in the in the mid lane because <laughs> maybe because, exactly. because the funding like, has been cut. I can't afford the seven dollar payment, guys. Let's just take heel. I've got this. Oh, uh, Moose, like Moose is uh, being trolled by Integrity. He was uh, trying to blue pill and Integrity um, aggroed the race onto him. So he wasn't able to actually complete uh, his back. Needs the scrub as the Aurelia has come down into the mid lane. Helps getting it pushed out. And that is because the Dragon is going to be spawning in 40 seconds. So they want to establish a little bit of control here. Um, and uh, control they do have. Chai Latte uses his smite though to take that blue buff. So yeah, well, it should be back up in the next 30 seconds, which would be good for them. And now they're also down on an ultimate for Lucian. Or, so it's it's really not a good case. And as you can see, Big Dong's going through trying to catch Lucian. He just dodges away and gets away with his uh, relentless pursuit. So not much they can Legend do there. on this turret. Kill it. There you go. So the turret gets taken down. So that's one turret's worth of gold over to the blue team. But there's going to be a team fight before they get to spend the money. Chai Lada goes all the way in. He's gone real deep all the way onto DL Crumpet. Uh, and Crumpet manages to take him down. Meanwhile, in the back, DRTK doing the business. A very late ult from the Mumu. It's not going to be enough. Or can they turn it around as the equalizer from Zambiga comes down? Needs the scrub at a smidgen of health. But the disengage from Magana's Soul Shackles is enough. Copy Gaming still going in, though, and picks up a kill beautifully, taking him down, stacking the damage. And finally, the double kill, in fact. He might actually be a, there might actually be a triple here. Um, onto Zeus, the rent game. might go off. Is the rent going to go off? No, she didn't. She didn't pop the rent, so he was he was able to get no, away. Use the rent to take down Doctor Crumpet. Ah, so, uh, uh, yeah. Definitely. Man, that was great. Great little team fight over there. And look at the amount of gold that uh, he's to get spent. Oh, yeah. Glen Glenroy goes through, tries to pick up uh, co um, Coffee Gaming, but uh, Coffee Gaming says actually no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right a really paying dividends right there, keeping her alive throughout the entire fight and keeping her strong enough to do keep going. That was a really nice cue there to actually just get her over the ledge there. I like that little use of it, the cue to just make her that little bit extra more mobile. But yeah, that team fight was basically a, a, a big show of the KP, uh, kiting capability the, that Tony Abbott still does have and the harder gauge that is followed up. Because you can see the fight almost turned around then when the Equalizer followed up with uh, the Glacial Fizzer. It was very well placed, but at that point, the, it looks like Tony Abbott's were a bit too far ahead and they, were, and they managed to get just a slightly better engage, even though it was a bit messy with the engage coming through from uh, Peter Chai Latte. Well, the thing is, is the Equalizer came down and they couldn't really follow up on it because Morgana popped the Soul Shackles. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was just a fantastic play by Tony Abbott's daughters. Um, now, they have lost uh, some of the vision, but not all of the, the vision around the dragon. They don't actually have a ward in the dragon pit the, um, itself. Um, and Coffee Gaming uh, gets his one of his wraiths uh, running around looking for things. Uh, Chai Lade trying to clear the vision of the opponents away. So they want to set things up. They're anticipating another team fight before they're going to be able to take this uh, dragon, I think. That's yeah, they're basically they they want to keep the momentum going. Looks like they've, they're able to pick up that ward there, um, that ward there, and they're starting it up right now. This is basically what Kraken Core Dra um, Kraken Core Dreaming is looking for. So, oh my god, I had a bit of a thing there, but looks like the yeah. Well, they popped uh, Lucian's ulti. In goes Ninja's describe Glenray. Uh, I don't think he has an ulti. Oh, he pops it 
very, very late, but it's too late. He can't hold anybody down. The Morgana's sh Soul Shackles um, do far more damage than Amumu's, um, uh, Amumu's uh, global, well, not global, but a team stun. And uh, that is a, another team fight and a dragon in favor of uh, Tony Abbott. Pretty much there. Now, this point, they seem to be snowballing a little bit, so it's going to be up to crowd controlled gaming to really just slow try to slow the game down as fast as they can use Oriana's wave clear to just make sure that the the last objectives and the last towers don't drop because getting that mid turret so early that particular tier turret is a really really bad moment for them because that that tower there even though they've nerfed it recently where the, it doesn't have the same amount of shields that it gives it still helps out a lot and it really controls the pace of the game but now that that's done it's really cracked it wide open for Tony Abbott's daughters yeah they've gone right up through the middle they have taken down both of the um, outer turrets in the top and the bottom lane so they can kind of pick and choose where they want to go next and uh, well r really that, that is going that they have the confidence to go anywhere on the map at the stage because team fight after team fight has been going in their favor. Yeah, the momentum's definitely in in their playing field right now, and like I said, they just crack control game needs to slow it down. So the interesting right now, as we're coming towards the 20 minute mark, we should have the Baron spawning. So it's going to be interesting to see if they try to set something up around there and try to force some more team fights because CCG might think that maybe you know Baron's their time to shine and then bait them to one final basically nail on the cough. But I think it's up to them basically just keep the pressure on, keep the siege on, maybe focus on the um, focus on the top lane so that CCG doesn't steal any Barons from underneath their nose. I, I have a feeling, though, that CCG is not going to make a decision like that. I think they recognize that they're far back. Uh, they've got good defensive wards down at the moment, a little bit around uh, the Dragon Pit um, and down at that bottom lane. But uh, as soon as Morgana and, um, and J4 were sighted near the Scuttle Crab area... Uh, well, not really the scuttle crab. This, this little bush here. They were clearing wards. Um, they had pushed their lane all the way up uh, down in the bottom lane, and they backed out straight away as soon as the, they had vision of those two. So they are very, very wary um, at this stage of the game. Big Dong uh, 420 looking for a kill. Uh, the, the Ren just for the slow, I think, really onto CCG Moose um, from Coffee Gaming as uh, they try to get a push down and, in fact, uh, succeed getting another second tier turret down. Yeah, once Hurricane is on, is in the hands of Callista, she just clears waves so quickly. And on top of that, it just synergizes so well with her passive. She's very hard to catch at this point. She's really hit, I'd say, probably her strongest power spike in the game right now. And the fact that she's been being fed this whole time is really going to pamper CCG's chances of coming back into this game. But it's, as you can see right now, they've got a lot of pressure on the map. They're still sticking to your, your general lane push where they've got... Um, two in the mid lane, two in the bot lane. Looks like they're sort of converging now on the middle point. I think they should make their way top, clear out that last level of infrastructure, and then try to um, get some wards in the in the top jungle and open up the, a chance for them to take that Baron, and that will really help them basically put the um, not put the nail in the coffin on CCG. Well, Rumble's backed right off uh, for a moment. The binding goes down onto Glenroy, stops his uh, bandage toss in its tracks. And they defend the turret successfully, but the uh, uh, Tony Abbott's daughters have got the run on them. They're able to transition much quicker down into this bottom lane and get the focus of the siege onto, uh, sorry, the mid lane, uh, the, the mid lane turret. Another binding from ages away. There's the stack coming down, the charm onto Moose. Um, and so he gets an, enough damage put onto him that he's got a blue pill. Yeah, so basically in, in this situation now, it's just a matter of them, you know, keeping the pressure up. And it's really up to CCG just to slow the game down. They're they're over 11k behind right now, so it's it's going to be very hard for them to get back into this game. I think they're basically are probably going to try and keep Callista down the bottom to split push while they slowly siege down the top lane. But um, as you can see, they're slowly beginning to light up that top half of the jungle. So that, that's going to open up the Baron for them very soon if they keep this pressure up. One, two, three four wards in that top area and they have good vision on the mid lane as well they have all the information that they need at the moment to really control the map and respond to whatever uh, CCGA does at the moment Callista meanwhile uh, keeping on with the split push um, down at the bottom lane and meanwhile Irelia you can just see her lurking in the jungle there on the mini map looking for an opportunity 
to uh, put the hurt down onto Zamiga. In fact, just maintaining the pressure there, really, making sure that the Rumble has to stay in the top lane. He's not going to be able to come through and participate in any sort of team fight without making the decision to trade his, uh, his turret in. Yeah, and as you can see in the bot lane, it's just so hard for them to even try to get a lockdown onto two people with, with the three that they have there. It's got, you've got bandage tosses, you've got all the different touches there, and looks oh, like she's popped her Oh, is he going to go in for an attack? No, it looks like she's just going to wow. put her into spirit form and like back away. But it looks like they've done what they needed to. It looks like the equalizer is coming down now. There's the ultimate onto Nega Scrub. It looks like it's only going to be her. It looks like she's going to jump straight down onto Oriana, try to get the run off there. Oriana's flashed away to get away, but it looks like she's safe now. J4 is in trouble. Looks like he's trying to get away. You've got being chased behind by Zomega. Fantastic charm by there onto the wow. rumble. Looks like they're trying to see if they can pick up onto CCG Moose. No, he's just going to walk away with the shield in front of him, not behind him. But what can you do in that sort of situation? And it looks like it's going basically again from bad to worse. Yeah, Rumble yeah, actually uh, flashed down into the jungle to try and pick up the kill on Chai Lite, who was tantalizingly low. But unfortunately, it just put him in a, a situation where there was no chance whatsoever of him escaping. It's kind of as though he had kind of he had gone, look, I'm going to die anyway. Might as well go for a kill. And unfortunately for him, he didn't even get the exit kill, the consolation um, out of Jarvan, who managed to get away by the skin of his teeth. Now, it is 25 minutes on the dot, and Dragon number three going to Tony Abbott's door. Look at how many spears is in that poor thing. God, it's like, you know, the Matador in, in watching the Bulls play. It was just where they're throwing spears into the poor thing. Heinous sport. Makes, Heinous. Like, Heinous sport. Oh, I, 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 I think there's just too many spears in that damn dragon, okay? Poor thing. Put it out of its misery is exactly, exactly. what Coffee just, Gaming just, did. Just, just, just let it die. Like, that's all you have to do. Don't throw that many spears into it. I'm sure it's... <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I should start a, a Peter... A Peter Grip for the Dragon. Yeah, what we need to do is go down to the barracks where these players are playing, find Coffee Gaming, and throw a tin of red paint in him. Exactly, that's what we need to do. Yeah. Look, he's, he's doing it to the red buff right now. Seriously, this guy just doesn't stop. Just, <sighs> come on, mate. Just too many spears. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, as you can see, right, he's, he's picked up a last whisper as well. So he's pretty much hit his three three item spike. He can probably build a defensive item, but at this point, he is really strong. So I wouldn't want to go up to him right now and say, "Hey, stop throwing spears at people," because he'll put one right through my head. Well, but, uh, looks like they are now lining themselves up for a bears kebab. Everyone feeling hungry. Oh, Moose went round to try and get some wards down. Unfortunately, he gets eaten alive, and straight away, that's the signal for Tony Abbott's daughter to get themselves um, onto this Baron. And if you want to see, uh, if you thought there were a lot of spears sticking through the dragon, um, just wait until you see what sort of rent we get um, onto <laughs> the Baron. 2,000. Oh, he's not even going to rent. Oh, there you go. oh, wait, there he goes. 1,000 <laughs> damage. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and meanwhile, uh, unfortunately, CCGA, uh, they, all they can do is pick up this which is quite nice for them because they haven't really had much room to do much in their own jungle. Um, so you take take the what you can. Prize. The consolation prize, basically, coming through there. Prize, yeah. But yeah, it looks like now they've they've like oh, we got the Baron, we have the Nutcracker. Looks like we're going to break into the base. Good Jay for sitting on the side. He doesn't realize he's sitting on a ward right there. So maybe they might think about lining something up to try and hit him. Maybe if they follow through with everything. Looks like they're going to try yeah, well, they there. might have caught him. He flags and drags out just as he eats the stun. And that's the signal for the engage. Big Dong uh, is caught in the curse and uh, gets taken down. But look at Callista in the background there just laying down the DPS. It is pretty constant. It is not going to be. In fact, Big Dong manages to get away because he was spirited away by Coffee Gaming. Absolute MVP of the situation. Highlighter went down in the end, but Coffee Gaming is the one that you need to kill, and he's not dead. Going up for, well, he's going to try and get his third kill um, in a row um, down onto Zamiga. He's on yours. And he's just trolling down. at the last second there. Looks like Negus is going to be like, no worries, buddy, I'll take the damage That's for game. you. That's game pretty much in this situation. They've got the Baron buff right now. They can probably push through to the end. Looks like Brom is going to try and hold. But a Valiant defense. 
see what he can do. I think uh, you got the Moomoo coming up now. Moomoo's up. Lucian's up. They're not really moving right now, but it looks like the damage is too much, and they're taking out from there. Yeah, this is the last guy. Lucian gets his ulti down, but gets stunned by Ninja's the Scrub, who uh, has actually been playing pretty well. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, shouldn't be calling that. It's a troll. Troll name. Troll name, indeed. <laughs> and uh, now the damage goes down onto the Nexus, and within a 28 and a half minutes, that is a very, very dominant performance from Tony Abbott's doors. Yeah, almost 20k gold league there, just shy by about 500 gold. Definitely very well played by them. They basically took control of the map, played to their team comp, and took it over and, comp and won. Very well executed. Fantastic play from both of the teams. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back relatively soon, as soon as we know what our next game is going to be. In fact, let me just uh, have a quick look to see if uh, Jim has let me know. Not yet. So we'll be back probably in... 10, maybe 15 minutes uh, once the next game is set up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Crisis and Menrix signing out.